All right. Well, um, well, let's let's go ahead and get going. We are recording, so we can share this out to somebody if they get in late. Um, so hopefully you can see my desktop right now. Um, yeah. computer. Yes. Um, so one way you can do this is you can actually just do this from a regular computer, old school style like Facebook. Um, and you would just log in or sign up. So if you're, you're explaining this to a parent or a student because it's new, um, they'd obviously need to sign up first. Um, but they can use their Apple ID. I mean, there's a click login here. I mean, there's a way to use their Facebook login, their Google login, their Apple login. So there's a way to connect it to their other accounts. Um, so we use the Google Classroom so it's easy enough for them to do that, right? I, I would guess so. We use um, Canvas and Microsoft uh, Office 365, so we don't do that at our school system, so I'm not 100% sure. Um, they can use any email address they want to. They can go make a new one if they really wanted to. So I'm going to log into mine here. Um, I forget things, so I save my passwords like a, like a bad person. All right, um, so once you've logged in, if y'all want to walk through this on your phones, if you've got it on your phone, um, or if you just want to kind of watch and see what, what I'm up to here, um, you can see how I've got all these different bands created. I've got my main hub, which is what we're going to talk about how to set up today uh, for our main program. And then my percussionists are doing different things sometimes, and I've got a percussion instructor like many of us do. Um, that way they're able to just talk amongst percussion. And then we have our, our color guard here also. So my guard instructor, especially right now, she's doing a few um, videos um, for folks um, to practice at home that have equipment and want to. Um, so there's that there. And then I started a music theory class. Um, we've only got about two weeks left of our school, like new content and not being able to play music. I was trying to think of some things just let's learn for the sake of learning um, and create that for next week. So um, if you click on create a band, we'll make a, a fake band for today for ourselves. So you just click on create a band. And if you don't have any, obviously that might be the only thing you can see. Um, uh, okay. I know where you are. Now. Okay. And then it, it prompts you for this. And I think for the most part, other than the band company, putting us in um, different categories. I don't know if somebody's microphone's kind of loud. I'm having trouble talking. So let me mute, mute somebody. They can unmute themselves in a minute. Um, anyway, um, so this just lets us categorize ourselves. Um, if you're a football team or a rec league stuff, maybe you're doing some coaching for that um, or a school group um, at, at work or whatever, you can do that. But um, I just use marching band because that's what we are. We're just going to call this band directors are awesome and you can put whatever name you want in there you can put your legal band um, booster program name there uh, whatever you want it to be if you're making you know later you could do subgroups like our percussion ensemble or whatever you can title it whatever you could do snack volunteers um, or you could just have an area just for your volunteers or just for your chaperones um, you could pawn those off to your committee chairs um, or however you have that structure with your band program and you can upload your own photos they have some stock photos that are okay. Um, they've got this nice drum picture here. Um, you can upload your own. So you can actually have pictures of your kids as the logo for your, your thing, or you can use your program logo. Um, as you saw, I have our, our Etowah uh, thing that I made using our logo and the Canva app, um, which if y'all wanna know about that, it's a good way to make posters and flyers and stuff. So um, but you do that. Um, and then do, here at the, the bottom here, you see band type. Now, I started ours as a private group, which means nobody can search and find it, no matter what they try and do. So the only way you can get into our group is if I send you a link and a code. Um, now, you can make a QR code. You can post in your band room. You can email out a link that people can click on. You could put that link on your, um, on your band website. Um, but I was trying to keep it from us having the ability for some rando person being able to join in our group without me being able to have control over that. Uh, so I'm getting creepers just looking for pictures of kids because those folks are out there. Um, so private's the most locked down as far as privacy goes. Um, over this lockdown, I've moved us to a listed group um, because it allows us to use uh, a user-created URL. So if you go in and you type band.us, um, which is their main um, address, and then you put... Um, backslash EHS Eagles, you'll actually go to our main band app. Um, it'll only show you a small description of us and a couple pictures that I selected to help them know they got the right one. 
and they can click the join button there, but that's all they can see. They won't be able to see calendars, albums, events, posts, nothing. It'll only show that um, to them. So maybe you want to start as a private group and then grow yourself from there as you feel comfortable. And then public group, like if you were doing something at your church or something and you want anybody anywhere to be able to find you and join at any time, you go and do a public group. So that's just like wide open Facebook land there. So we'll click private for now. Um, and that's kind of that setup. So you choose what's going to be best for you and click OK. All right, now we've got our main our main page here. You can see we've got all posts. So I can see a running um, like your Facebook wall here. Um, albums where you can store pictures. This might be a great way we're going to look at next year. We didn't really utilize this this year, but parents and students could upload pictures from during the season. And then at the end of the year, you just go collect all those for the end of the year slideshow from there instead of having to ask people to email things in. So um, then events, there's a calendar feature. Um, and then you can look at members uh, specifically. So I'm going to click on that. Since we don't have any members, the next thing I need to do is invite people to our, our group. So you can click invite members here. And here are your options. You can share the URL. So this is just a copied link um, that it'll make for you. So I could copy and paste this into an email, website, Facebook post, Twitter post, you know, anywhere you can put a URL. And you can either click copy URL and it'll put it on your clipboard, or you can highlight it and, and copy that way with the right click. Uh, whatever method you like to use, I like to use control um, C and control V because I like keystrokes and I'm a nerd. Um, so that's one way. Uh, the next way is if you have another band, say you have your main hub and you're wanting to create a color guard one, you can click this band one and you can choose to share this to that other band. So you, it just makes a post for you. Um, that's how you can make some subgroups. Um, an invite code, you can click on that. Um, and um, and it's, you know, if somebody's right next to you, you can create a code to share to them so they can join that way. And what I used while it was super private is this QR code, because I could download this picture and put it on a Word document with instructions on how to set up the account. And I just take this all over the band room for my kids. Um, and then you, most phones now have a QR reader on them um, and they just hold it up there and boom, they're there. Now they have to set up an account first because um, it'll prompt them to do that. Once they're signed in, they just throw that QR code, hit join, and then it'll send you a notification that they're waiting to be approved to be part of your group. Um, and here's the download the QR code and just saves it as a JPEG file. You can use that anywhere also. So I'm gonna hit pause on me talking and see if y'all have any questions so far. I have a question. Yep. The calendar feature. Yep. Does it sync with Google Calendar by chance? Um, I think so. It's got, the, sorry. Yeah, we haven't talked about the calendar yet, um, but there's a way to, to subscribe to it. Um, so if your Google Calendar lets you subscribe to external calendars, which I imagine it does, kind of like iCal, um, I'll show you how to do that too. Because um, I've got it synced to my phone. So if I update an event inside my calendar, it's going to push to my cell phone. So even if I make a change to a location, a time, a description, um, we use Sign Up Genius for our volunteers and we post that in the description for the event. So once that's posted in there, that'll automatically be a link inside their calendar app on their phone too. Um, there's a way for them to do it event by event and add that to their calendar. There's a button for that. Um, but it's a lot easier to subscribe to the entire calendar. Um, and you can create different calendars. I've got a marching band calendar, a concert band calendar, a school system calendar with all of our breaks, um, a winter guard calendar, and they can choose which ones they subscribe to so they're not getting stuff that they don't care about because you can also set up reminders as you put things in. Um, for example, maybe marching band due payments are due on the 15th of the month and you'll remind everybody at the beginning of the week that they're due five days later. You set that up when you make the event. You don't have to remember to remind everybody. The app does it for you. Um, so I can go into that here in just a minute and we can set up an event and then show you how to, how to do the calendar setup. But as far as getting started and getting members uh, signed up, does anybody have questions about that so far? Uh, no, sir. All right. All right. So um, let's make a quick post, you know, maybe say welcome. So we go back to our all posts here at the top and this should look pretty similar on your phone. If you're, if you're following along there, um, there's a way to set up keywords, hashtags, and then you can add somebody. So if you've got another staff member or you've got a kid, maybe you want to spotlight a kid that day and you go at Michael who did a great job turning a wood bowl today with natural edges. And you could add that student so they get notified that it's in there, right? Um, 
So that's a way to do that. Or maybe you at a booster president because you want people to go communicate with that person instead of you because your inbox is full. Um, but those are some, some minor things you can set up later. Um, we've got some long family rules in our band room. Rule number one is don't be a jerk. Rule number two is don't pass up opportunities use the restroom when it's available. And rule number three is to practice more. And so we made a weekly challenge in our band app to practice at least 20 minutes a day, post a selfie and tell us what you did or are going to do. And so the hashtag running that is hashtag rule three practice more. And so now I can click on that hashtag and we can see everybody nice and organized. And that's a new feature as of like last week. So um, let's make a post. We can just click what's on your mind and that pops up here. So we can make a welcome post. And what I ask everybody to do is use their first and last name so we don't get weird kids using like their Twitter handle or whatever. Um, So just something easy like that. Um, you can post pictures. That's what this one here is. So you can upload that from your computer. If you've got pictures in your albums already, you can pull that from there. There's stickers. So if you're creative and they've got a whole bank of stickers, some are free, some aren't. Um, you can attach a video. So maybe you want everybody to practice um, a good attention posture and you've got a video on how to do that. You can just throw that video straight into the post. Um, you can do live streaming, which is what I've been doing a good bit of. Through this, we did a digital interest meeting, uh, which is about an hour, uh, where I just live streamed from my living room and talked about dates and expectations um, and basically told them I had no idea what money was going to look like yet and just I'll sit tight. We did that a month ago um, and kind of covered some things like that. So you can just do a live stream from your computer. It requires a third party program to stream, and I'm still figuring that out um, to get that smooth. We're intending to do our band banquet as a live stream party. Um, and I'm almost done with that, but on your phone or your tablet, you don't need any extra software. You just click go live and boom, you're live. And it's, it's recording whatever you've got there. Um, you can do polls. You know, if you're doing a spring concert and you let your kids choose one tune for your spring concert, you could do a poll and let them vote right here in the app. You can attach files. Uh, if you do physicals, if you do marching band paperwork, you can just attach that straight here. You can go ahead and create an event straight from here. If you want to do that. Um, there's a way to do a to-do list where everybody can do part of a task. Um, there's signups, um, not quite as smooth as Signup Genius, um, so we haven't used that a whole lot. There's a way to do attendance, which they've begun to do a better job with. So if you want to use that for marching band practices, um, now you can set up, they can't sign, you know, maybe you, you let them sign up five minutes before practice starts and you let it go to 10 minutes after, school, after practice starts. So they can't, you know, decide I'm gonna skip practice and still sign in from home, even though they weren't there and try and pull one over on you. So there's some settings there. Um, there's bill split. You know, if your kids are bringing $5 in from pizza for pizza or whatever, you can keep a running tally of that that way too. I haven't done that because I also don't know what it looks like as far as privacy goes on everybody else's side. You can add locations. Um, and if you're selling stuff for a business, you can do a markdown. Um, so that kind of goes through those features. Um, and then you see post settings here at the bottom. Um, you can add it as a notice, which on Facebook and Twitter is kind of like pinning it to the top. It just holds it as an important thing at the top of the, the opening page. And you can actually add it as an important notice so it stays at the very tip top. Um, but you can only do two of those at a time. And the idea there makes sense. You know, if everything's the most important, then what is important? Um, and so it kind of makes you make that decision as you go. You can always downgrade something to a normal notice and punch something to that important status. Um, or you can just leave everything as a notice, but because the, the feed just fills up once you get going, it's hard to find things sometimes. You can use those hashtags as a way to organize things so it's easy to find or use these notices um, as well. You can schedule a time for a post to go out. So maybe you've got your leadership you know, coming up, you're making your decisions now. Um, maybe you make your decision on Saturday, You know, who's gonna be doing what for the next year, and you want that to drop on Monday at 9 a.m but you're going to be in a meeting. Well, you can schedule that ahead of time and it can drop even without you having to hit go. Or maybe you want to say, hey, signups for buses for this year's marching band um, tour are going to start on Tuesday um, and you hit go for that on Monday. And that way you don't have to remember it as, it as it happens. And then this is just allowed download so you can actually share this out to other bands that you're in charge of. Um, so if you have your, your, guard, your guard subgroup or chaperone subgroup, you can push this out to those that are having to make a brand new post.
So I'm gonna hit pause again and see if there's questions because that's a whole bunch of stuff. Oh. I'm good. Steven. Yes, sir. Hey, um, what if I wanted to um, post my, my LGP tunes recording and mm -hmm. upload the kids parts? Is that possible? They um, can just download them for me. Uh, the is if you have your the parts for your your music as PDF files, you should be able to do those as an attachment through the file little um, paper clip here. Um, as far as the audio, um, if it's a video, so if it's something you've made, um, if it's shared through something like YouTube, you could probably just link that video. Let's click on that video link. Okay, so it pulls up my computer. So you should be able to upload like a media file. And I don't, let's see, I think I downloaded Star Wars. Yes, I don't know. It's not gonna let me pick that. Um, I'm not really sure about like audio stuff because if you're posting to YouTube, you get in trouble for copyright stuff if you don't own that. But um, you should be able to at least do your, your PDF parts and link maybe an example video, maybe an ensemble you know is doing it the way you wanna do it, at least for the time being. Does that answer your question, Mr. Rossi? Yeah, thanks. Yeah. All right. Other questions? Nope. All right, cool. I'm going to hit the post button so you can see what this is going to look like. And you see bold italics and stuff. You can't get super fancy with it. Um, you can get a little bit fancy with it. It's kind of, kind of like I'm not a lot, I'm not superstitious. I'm just a little stitious. Um, <laughs> so your kids can shout, which is like liking things. So they can click shout and they've got a few options here. They can love something, laugh at it, thumbs up, surprise, cry, be mad. That's kind of funny sometimes. Like when we had a practice canceled because of rain, a couple people put sad faces on something. Uh, a couple people put thumbs up, you know, so sometimes you get accidental input that you weren't expecting. Um, and it's kind of interesting. Um, there's an option here to comment. Um, I started out with our, our band app pretty locked down. Um, cause I didn't want to create a space where somebody could accidentally post something controversial. Cause sometimes kids don't understand boundaries, um, as they're kind of growing up a little bit might put a joke that's not appropriate for others or a, 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 a meme they found that they thought was funny. That's going to irritate somebody else. So I had that turned off as a administrator. I could post a comment obviously. And I have my booster, um, president and communications director also able to post comments. Now in lockdown, it's a way for us to communicate on side of a post. So I've turned that on for now. Um, and it works just like Facebook. You click comment, you add your comment here, and you see it looks the same as Facebook. And you can add stickers and stuff. So it just keeps that on that post. Um, you also see here it says notice how long ago it was posted. Um, and then here we have this notices bar now. And all of your notices would be listed here with your important ones being first. Um, once you have people in your group, you can actually see how many people have read this. Um, if y'all all were in here and three of you had looked at it, there'd be a little eyeball here and it'd say three. And you can actually, as the administrator, click on that and you can see who's read it and who hasn't read it. So, you know, if you put something important out, you can say, hey, I need you to go read this. Uh, I'm going to check and see who's read it. Um, and you could go in there and get as specific as, hey, Charlie, I saw you didn't read that post. That applies to you. You need to make sure you go read that. Or, hey, what, what are you going to do about this assignment or we need that to get turned in. I noticed that the deadlines happened and you didn't turn that in. You also didn't read that post. You know, you need to get, get connected in. Um, Cause what I've found is people will have all their notifications turned on in the beginning and then they'll get a little bit overwhelmed because activity will surge because kids get excited, parents get excited and you're just trying to build everything. So there's a lot of announcements that'll be coming out and things as you're getting them set up and they'll turn those notifications off because they're tired of being buzzed. And all of a sudden they miss a deadline. They're like, oh, I turned my notifications off. I'm sorry. So that'll kind of help you see um, what's going on. So that's kind of how you do a post. And you can do a post for literally anything. I did a brag post yesterday evening. So we had about uh, 19 kids um, post their, their practice selfie. And I was trying to encourage, see if we get over 30 today. And the power went out where we were. Um, and so that's down a little bit today. But you can do you know, some congratulatory type posts, some positivity um, pictures and things. Um, there. So that's a little bit about posts. Um, all right, let's go to events because we all have way too many events. So it's a calendar a lot like this. Um, and it'll look like this on your um, on your phone, you can click on the day, and it'll pop up this. 
or you can click add event and it'll do the same thing. So let's add an event here and we'll just say um, band interest. If I can spell. Um, and if it's recurring um, or maybe it's this part of it changes, the, the calendar start and end time is different, but the title stays the same. It'll actually track what you put in and you can copy and paste that through that button there. Um, just remind us in the description, you can attach pictures, you can attach files. Um, again, we, for Friday nights for chaperones and stuff, we'll put in our sign of genius link for people to click on. You can actually pick select location on a map. Uh, let's see if I'm going to stall my own system out here. So I hadn't tested this out. Um, you type in the address or location and you can actually move your pin wherever you want. So if you want to meet the flagpole at Pickens County High School, or Pickens High School, you can put the pin on the flagpole or you can just put the address in. You know, I know for Winter Guard, sometimes you want to meet on a different side of the building. And so that'll kind of help a little bit. We've used that before. Um, but that, that way parents, I know, especially with Winter Guard, there's like two Mill Creeks. Uh, there's a Mill Creek Middle School over next door to us inside the same uh, zip code um, that feeds River Ridge. And then there's Mill Creek in Gwinnett County. And we've had uh, girls not listen to instructions and parents not listen to instructions and show up to our local Mill Creek um, at the report time and then have to uh, not get a speeding ticket to make it to the performance on time. So adding addresses helps a lot. Um, but this works just like all your other calendars. You've got your start day and time. You can choose to do your end day and time. Time zones if you're going to go on a trip, I guess. Um, to Central Standard or, you know, you know, fly to Hawaii um, and have a good time out there. You could do that. You could do all day. Maybe it's just a reminder that forms are due on Friday. You just click all day. Um, you can add reminders. You can do custom, um, whatever you want to do. You can repeat. So if you've got Tuesday, Thursday schedule, you set it up one time here, how you want that to be and hit repeat every day, every week, two weeks, just like you would your regular calendar. Um, this is where I would encourage you to decide what you want to do. It says share as post. If every if you're building your calendar and you share everything as a post, people are going to get overwhelmed with notifications. You can just uncheck that box, make all of those dates that they probably already have, and it'll be nice and quiet. But then you can redirect them to the calendar. How much time is left on the timer? So was that a question for me? Sorry. Um, and then you can do RSVP. Like if you're going to do something after school and you want to see how many kids are going to show up for a volunteer thing or, or whatever, you can do an RSVP. And then it pops up these options you can set up. Maybe option, um, deadline for them to tell you how many, you know, if you only got 10 spots, then you put a cap on it at 10. Uh, guest members, they can bring a friend that maybe is not in the band. And again, that share it post down there. Um, let's see. You can make multiple calendars. So we can make this um, a marching band. We use our Etowah blue here. And that'll color code it on our, our calendar here. I hit OK. And now you see that events popped up there. I didn't share it as an event or a post, so it should not be over here. So yeah, so it's missing. Um, to sync to calendars, somebody had asked that. You can go to settings right here and maybe a gear icon on your phone. Um, and here's where you can, you can set up different permissions. So permissions to add events, you're not gonna want that to be everybody. So you can change that to admin and co-admin. So maybe your booster board um, or a specific person you allow, assistant directors or whatever, or just you as the admin. And that's who can do that particular thing. Um, permission to edit events, you can adjust that. Permission to add calendars. Um, and then there's a way to show upcoming events on the main page. Um, and so you can set your window. So you can do like a week at a glance. Don't do it at all 14 days or a whole month on the main page. Um, and then your band calendar. So you can add them here and just in mass. Um, show holidays, all that kind of stuff. Um, you can subscribe to a URL. So if I made a subgroup for my percussion, but I wanted to also show them the marching band calendar. I would, um, let's see, let's see. I did this on my phone earlier. Let's see. 
this would be where I could import my calendar on the percussion page or whatever. I would just copy and paste the URL for the calendar. There's a place to import from um, other calendars. Mm, I don't see that one. Maybe we'll go back to our main settings over here. Scroll down. Um, this is just the main settings page here. You can change your settings to receive what kind of notifications you want. But I'm hunting that question to be able to um, share out to our phones. If you have a question, go ahead and ask it while I'm searching for this. So we're not just awkwardly sitting here. Um, on the comments, hey, go ahead. No, I'm sorry. Go ahead, please. Uh, on the comments, is there a way to set it where you can approve the comments before they show up or is it just yes or no? Um, we, we can go into that and I can make sure. Um, so I just changed that. I gave them permission to po to post, but right, it's but after approval for the post, but I don't know if that goes for the comments too or not. Um, Cause I haven't, I haven't, you know, relocked that down or looked into that. I'd only look at the post. Otherwise you'd have a kid could post whatever the heck they want to. Um, but it right. does come in as pending approval and me or one of my co-admins, my booster president or whoever else I've got on that level can also approve those. So it's not just up to me, but they'll pile up and you can hit go on those. So here's what we're looking for. Export band calendars. Um, on the settings page under manage band menu. Um, and we want to select our marching band calendar. And it gives us the ability to do Apple, Google, Outlook, Yahoo, um, or just a URL. So there should be a place in most calendar apps for you to subscribe to a calendar. All you really need is this URL. But um, for Apple Calendar, Google, and these, it'll spit out a specific type of address that'll be a little bit smoother for that. I know, like, we follow Atlanta United pretty hardcore, and some subscribe to their game calendar. So if they change the start time, I know what's going on. Y'all might do that with football or, or whatever. But it's the same way to do right here. And I put some instructions on this for my parents um, so they could do the same if they wanted to because the more easily accessible information is, the the less likely they are to be ill-informed. But at the same time, you could also say, hey, I'm sorry you missed that deadline. Did you check our, our band app communication source where that's been posted for three weeks? You know, you could, you could push them back to your communication method just like you would an email. Um, so does that answer, I forget who asked that question about linking those together. Does that got that good? Cool. Um, and you can also copy this in those subgroups like your percussion or your guard or your orchestra or whatever you might have going on. And you can actually copy this URL and then go to the calendar in that group and subscribe to that calendar. So it'll it basically daisy chains this one to that one um, to make it easier to keep those things together. So that's events, questions about events. Steven. Yes, sir. Okay. I'm just, I'm just curious if any of you guys have used Charm, and do mm -hmm. you prefer this uh, over Charm? I said bye to Charms, I guess, two years ago or a year and a half ago. Uh, we piloted the band app as a communication tool um, last spring just to try it out a little bit um, and liked it. I got a lot of positive feedback from my parents. We left Charms because it's clunky. Um, we were really using it for our inventory system, which it worked great for in our uniforms, but our, the financial side of it, which is really the touchiest part of everything, I just felt like it was not, it was too um, clunky for my volunteers to learn. And, and so that caused a lot of extra stress on them where we were. And so we switched over to QuickBooks for that. Um, and so this has been one of our tools. We also use MailChimp for email communications which you can get a free account for and it'll send a whole bunch of emails for free. Like it's where we have not had to look at starting to pay for a subscription for, to them yet um, to take over our email notification. Um, and then with QuickBooks, we put in all their personal information there. So if we need to call a kid or whatever, I can use the QuickBooks app on my phone to look up that information. And then of course it's inside MailChimp. Um, so that's, that's just what we've done. Um, I know Charms works well, and I think they've come up with, um, uh, I think they've updated their system maybe in the last six, 12 months too, because they got, they got acquired by somebody. 
not that, excuse me, not that long ago. Okay. I don't know if that answered your question, Mr. Rossi, or not. Yes, you did. Thank you. Yes, yep. indeed. Other questions? I think somebody else was trying to ask something, too. So I'm just trying to add the URL for my um, band calendar on Google Calendar, too. It's not working, but I, I'm going to keep messing with it. Okay. You're trying, to, you're trying to subscribe? Yeah, trying to subscribe. Let's see if we can figure that out here real quick. Um, should be able to go events, settings, and down to the bottom for subscribe by URL. Have you tried that, Ube? Yeah, I went in. I went into Google and and did the public URL to this, but you know, Google says it's 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 requesting. Uh, what's it? Hang on, so let me do it one more time. Let's see what it says. The uh, the thing here says add iCal format. So is there a way for you to get an iCal specific link? From Google I'll, I'll keep looking for that okay but yeah. that's what I would try and do is try and match that up as exact as I can oh and there it is but I just said keep looking I had to look further yeah. down sorry okay go ahead no, oh you're fine um, all right so let's go through some of these settings um, again this will be personal preference how hard you want to lock it down or not lock it down I started out um, probably overprotective um, just to minimize and create this as an outward going system of information and not a two-way um, but you may want it to be a two-way you may want a combination so you can change your band name anytime you want to so if you decide you don't like band directors are awesome you want to say band directors are the best in the galaxy or whatever you want it to be you can change that you can change your picture maybe you update from your full band shot every fall you can change that and make it fresh maybe you rebrand and you need to update your logo or your school decides they're going to rebrand and you want to update your logo. Um, band type, that's what we said at the beginning. We can actually change that anytime we want to. Um, and we can go to a listed group and I'll show you kind of how that works here. But it says anybody can, can search the band and view the description, but only members can view posts. So you can also go public if you want to. Um, it does say a notification sent to your members. That way everybody's notified that you've changed the publicity status of your group. Um, and then you click save. And what that'll let me do now is band description and URL. So we can type in our band description and maybe you have this on your website already and you can link your websites. Just remember this is your public footprint. Anybody's gonna be able to see this at this point. So you don't wanna put any personal information or pictures that aren't approved to go out um, and keywords. You can select your location so people know it's the right one. There's an Etowah High School um, in Alabama who's got a pretty good band over there too. Um, and so I might want to make sure that they're searching Etowah band and they get the one in Georgia and not the one in Alabama. Um, and then you can set your URL. And it's got some must reads here on how to do that. But you see it's HTTPS, um, you know, the regular stuff here, band.us slash at, and you can title this, you know, Pickens Dragons, um, uh, whatever you want to, throw in there, um, unicorns are the best, I don't know, whatever creative thing you want for people to search. And then you can just copy and paste this and send this out to your folks and they just click the join button instead of having to use a code um, and a couple step process, which is why I went to that so we can get our eighth graders that are rising up to us next year a little bit smoother. It was a little easier for my middle school guy to send that out. You can add up to four photos here if you want to. You can attach a file, but again, this is your public zone right here and then it'll eventually show up here on the left underneath the rest of your information. So that's that's an up to you thing if you wanna do that. I just recently did that um, this week. Um, so it's something I'm, I'm getting used to. Um, here's, here's some things that are important. Member size, um, this probably be good for most of us. If our bands are over a thousand dollars, you're doing something you need to share with the rest of us. Um, but member requests, admin approval is required to join. For our purposes, I would encourage you to have that on. Um, and, and again, your co-admin can approve those people also, so it doesn't have to be you. Um, it could be an assistant band director or a band parent designated. Um, I, because I put that join button publicly on our, um, our listed group, I, t I made an ask a question for membership. So you turn that on and then you can ask, well, you can ask literally anything you want to. Um, and they're going to type in a free answer. So 
um, a trigger word for my kids is the word intensity. If I say that word, they scream it back at me. So I type something silly like, what word will band students respond enthusiastically to? And so for my eighth grade parents, we told them the answer. For my high school kids, they know exactly what that word is. And so I'm gonna click on their uh, request to join and it's gonna tell me what their answer is. Um, before we did that, I had a parent join and I forget what they put, but it wasn't the right answer. And I had a feeling they were an eighth grade parent. So it lets you ask a follow-up question. I just asked them who the band director at the middle school was and use that as a way. So just adds another step of verification there. If you want it, um, I would at least do the member request. Um, where you've got to approve them, um, even if you don't want to do the, the membership question, but that's up to you. Um, you can publish that information in, in email, so it's easily accessible. I just wouldn't post it anywhere public like Twitter or Facebook, because some rando Zoom bomber could um, get on that and hop in your group. Um, there's different privileges um, here. Again, this is just kind of scroll and play. that um, You can do view post readers, um, may suggested tags, set notices and pin chats, um, add events, create, accept members, um, anywhere from anybody to administrators only to co-admins or both, delete posts and comments, um, all that kind of stuff. So that's, that's a place I just may, might play around a little bit and come up um, with what works best for you. Uh, what we did the first maybe couple of weeks is I just had my band booster president, uh, treasurer, just the base of the board, um, sign in, some as admins, some as students. And I said, all right, try and be an obnoxious kid and mess this up. And we just played around with it till we came up with the right combination. And then we sent it out to the full group. Um, let's see. Um, but yeah, you play with that, manage co-admin. That's where you go and um, say, um, say, Paul, you, you're in my group and I want you to be able to approve people and do stuff as a co-admin. I'd go here to manage co-admin and I just click on your name and approve and you're upgraded to co-admin status or admin status. So if you've got an assistant band director, they can be on the same level with you if you want, or if you like being the head honcho, the head cheese, and you don't want anybody up there with you because the air is nice and clear, then you can leave it as just you yourself. So somebody was trying to ask something, sorry. Hey, how's it going, Mr. Long? Hey. Um, I want to know, do you, can you, are these settings for all of your, you know, if you have different classes or different things, or can you manage these for each class? Yeah, so this is only settings for this band. So if I start okay. a new band, I've got to do all this for them too. So like my music theory class that I started for next week, which is just a purpose of learning, like there's no grades, it's not an actual class. We're just going to do 30 minute theory lessons each day just for fun. Um, that one I've got like wide open. I, I don't care because the kids that are going to get in that for extra help and extra desire aren't going to cause problems. So I just didn't even mess with it. Um, but you do have to adjust your privileges um, and your whoever your admin is that you want on all of your groups, they'll have to join each of these individually. Your students will have to join the ones that respond or that they need to be in. You'll have to set up these settings for each of them. Um, if you want them all the same, just write down what you got and just go through and make them um, all exactly the same, or if you want uh, one that's maybe has a few more bits of freedom, then relax some things there. I know my leadership team, I've got a leadership chat that I use to communicate with them during the season, but um, my band president created a band for the leaders in the app that he runs instead of a group me. So they, they can, you, anybody can create a band. So your students, if you're, if they want to have a space that they can do kind of unmonitored, you know, so you're not responsible for it either. Um, they can create their own area if they want to, um, or you can create an area for them where you can lock a few things down. Cool. Uh, this is where you can add the suggested tags, um, turn on and off trending posts, uh, manage events, all that kind of stuff here. And you can delete bands. If you make one, you're like, oh, that's crap. You want to start over again? You can just delete it and try again. Um, it's always a good thing. So somebody was trying to how, say something. Sorry. Um, how's the trance? So, you know, if I have my seventh grade, um, you know, concert band, and then some of them make symphonic band next year, um, can you take them and add them or is it easier for just send out a new code or a new link for that band and tell them to join it? Um, um, 
we we haven't used it with that kind of sub creep level yet because I just started playing with that as we hit winter guard season because I didn't want to inundate everybody with their competition schedule and rehearsal schedule. Um, so I made one just for them and then I've made one for the percussion ensemble. So we haven't been through a year cycle yet. Um, I know you can remove people from a, a band and you can add people to a band. I would probably think um, that you could encourage somebody to leave one band because they can do that on their own and then mm -hmm. send out the code for the one they need to be in. Um, I don't, because I haven't done it. I don't know what a best plan of attack for that would be. I would probably be encouraged to not delete a band and start it over again in order to boot everybody out. Um, I know in remind, I would clear the class every year and make everybody sign up again. Right. Um, and if they're dumb enough or, you know, not responsible enough to leave themselves and they get extra notifications, it's kind of on them, you know, if, cause they're the only ones that are going to be annoyed by it. It shouldn't bother you that they're getting notifications for classes that they're not in. Now, and you also have your parents sign up for this as well. Yeah. We got probably almost 400 people in our main band hub. Um, let me see if it'll let me stop um, recording and then I can 